Welcome to Holding Pattern. My name is Derek. Today is May 9th, 2021. Uh, today we will be discussing what is going on with the alt market, what is going on with Bitcoin. I've been working on my own Bitcoin prediction. I've been looking at, uh, if you are on Twitter and you look around at different models that people have been making, uh, I've been spending the past about five months working on my own uh, model of where I see Bitcoin going uh, through the year 2050. I am actually pretty confident in this model using uh, historical price patterns of Bitcoin and uh, really muting those out and taking a look at averages and uh, following the same curve of adoption as uh, cell phones. I feel pretty confident in small. And also, I found it interesting that uh, the head of macro uh, at Fidelity used the exact same model that I'm using. So uh, I patted myself on the back there, <laughs> uh, feeling like I knocked it out of the park. But uh, uh, so I'll get to that model in just a little bit. I'll show you, I'll uh, tell you exactly where I see things going. Um, and how I'm using BlockFi uh, to really capitalize on that. But first, uh, let's talk about the uh, markets a little bit. So Bitcoin is currently at about 5,700, or is this, excuse me, 57,000. Oh, geez, 5,700 would be terrible. Um, Ethereum is nearly at $4,000. That is insane. Binance is at about 650. Dogecoin's at about uh, 55 cents. Dogecoin's market cap <laughs> is at $72 billion. Uh, that just blows my mind. Ethereum Classic has had an absolute stupid run up. It w um, went from about $30 to uh, $120. Uh, Monero has been tearing up. It's now at about 450 yeah everything's just been going up but we are currently at a little bit of a dip so this dip is this the end for alt season uh, historically if you look alt seasons last roughly about 14 weeks or roughly about 100 days so is this the end of the alt season when was the beginning of the alt season? What altcoin really first popped off and took off this year? Because alt season didn't really start till you either had Dogecoin, which started at the very beginning of February, taking off. Or if you look at Ethereum, I mean, Ethereum's been following Bitcoin, the pretty typical 32 Ethereum to one Bitcoin pairing with price action until the past roughly 30 days if ethereum is broken from that 32 to 1 ratio so if you if you look at the past 90 days i mean bitcoin bitcoin's been pretty flat for the past 30 days it's been staying pretty consistently in the 50 to 60 range it's not knock on that yeah it's been going sideways but we over the past 90 days has had the same market cap increase as Facebook. So <laughs> it's not to diminish Bitcoin staying sideways. That, that it had a massive, massive jump. So if you look at the charts going back, Ethereum really started taking off at about the end of March is when I would consider the flat line for Ethereum to be $1,500. So Ethereum escaped $1,500 at the end of March. So end of March would bring us to, we'd be roughly at about the 60-day uh, timeline right now, with it being the beginning of May. So we should have about another 40 days left for this alt season. What will Ethereum end up being? I'm guessing Ethereum is going to be around $5,000 by june but i'm not leverage trading i you know i'm not long i'm not short i'm just continuing to acquire uh ethereum via mining 
and uh, just uh, constantly adding it to my block BlockFi portfolio, collecting interest on it, uh, which then that is uh, being transferred over into Bitcoin. I don't know if Doge is going to hit a dollar. Uh, I hope that it does, because I've been acquiring Doge since it was uh, a fraction of a cent. So I'd really love to see Doge hit a dollar. That would just make me so happy. It would really put a smile on my face. Even if I didn't have any Doge, it would still put a huge you know, grin on my face. Because, I mean, just the fact that Dogecoin, something I made an episode about back in 2019, uh, the return of the Doge, seeing that coming back and just rocketing just makes me, you know, just makes me happy but it also really says something about <laughs> the destruction of the u.s dollar <laughs> yeah um so when the this all coin season ends i see a 90 percent retracement in the price of doge so we right so doge has been really hanging out in the 60 cent region Anywhere from like 40 to 60 is where it's been hanging out. So my prediction of what the price of Doge will be post alt season is going to be two cents. So we might hit a dollar by June, uh, maybe July, and then there's going to be a market crash. Uh, eventually, the price of Doge is going to settle at around two cents. Uh, be prepared for that. Hopefully you have not been constantly accumulating large sums of money of Doge in the 60 cent region. Uh, so back to my model. I've been uh, following the stock to flow of Bitcoin. And so over the past 10 years, Bitcoin has had roughly a 200% uh, annualized return year over year. So taking that into consideration, I believe that Bitcoin will probably have a 100% uh, um, increase over the next 10 years. And after that will be 50%. After that will be 25%. That gives us a look at the next 30 years or so. Uh, with that in mind, that gives us a price of $1 million dollars. By June of 2026, that gives us uh, $10 million by July of 2030. That gives us $1 billion by end of 2038. So my normal 401k, if I was to retire, you know, with a typical S&P fund, I would be retiring around... Uh, 2045 with my age if i look at the end of 2045 let's say i would be struggling to retire like you know you know a typical person that trying to get about two or three million dollars to retire with uh the price of bitcoin you were using my model by end of 2045 will be oh geez i need to even like look at this to even <laughs> like figure this out um there's so many so many commas. All right. Uh, one Bitcoin will be about $54 billion by 2045. That is if hyper Bitcoinization actually takes place. Um, actually, this isn't with hyper Bitcoinization because that would be an exponential model. And this is a S curve model. So I take that back. Uh, so using my model and using if what I do with BlockFi. Uh, so block if you if you don't know BlockFi is a essentially a lending platform where you can put Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. Uh, I think that you can also add Chainlink uh, and uh, Paxos Gold. Um, there might be something else like yeah, I'm blanking. Um, you can add to that platform and you earn interest on the coins that you add on the platform. You earn interest because they basically use those coins. Uh, you lend the coins out. Um, so 
you know, BlockFi earns, let's say, fifteen uh, percent interest on their side, and you get about half of that, so you get about six percent. But they just recently reduced their payouts to people from six percent to five percent. But I have a feeling in the future that is going to go up. The reason why I feel it's going to go up is because the U.S. government is talking about increasing capital gains on crypto. So if one were to add 0.3 Bitcoin to BlockFi, uh, 0.3 Bitcoin being, you know, making you one of the top 1% holders of Bitcoin. So if you were to add 0.3 Bitcoin to BlockFi and just let it sit, let that 0.3 sit, and then also do $400 a month contributions to BlockFi, uh, by end of 2030, you would have about $58,000 that you would have uh, earned just from doing that alone. Uh, that would give you roughly 0.84 Bitcoin, with uh, Bitcoin's price being $13 million, and your account would be worth uh, roughly $10 million. Um, and if you let that again sit, just constantly getting $400 a month, no increase, just $400 a month with that initial 0.3 Bitcoin that you added, uh, and you take it all the way to 2040. Uh, so let's do December 2040. You would have uh, 1.6 Bitcoin, which would be which would mean that you've earned. $29 million, your account total would be worth $5 billion, and uh, Bitcoin would be worth $3 billion. Yeah. Uh, as you can tell, with compound interest, I mean, there's a reason why Einstein called compound interest one of the most powerful forces in the universe. Because um, that point three Bitcoin with those monthly contributions, even with the incre that steep increase in price of Bitcoin, by 20, uh, 2033, mid-2033, uh, early 2034, your account will become worth one Bitcoin. That is if a BlockFi stays at the 5% interest rate obviously that greatly changes this model but like i said i expect for the five percent to stay flat or increase you know it's going to fluctuate over time uh so let's just say that the um uh, interest rate is going to stay you know pretty flat at five percent as an average because uh, once again if the united states does increase taxes on cryptocurrency then uh, people are not going to want to sell their Bitcoin. Instead, they're going to be taking out loans against their Bitcoin on platforms like BlockFi. So that way, you don't have to pay capital gains on something that you're borrowing against. I mean, that's just an asset that you have. So by the time that I would retire at the end of 2045, I would have 2.3 Bitcoin uh, and my account would be worth uh, $120 billion by then. Um, with the price, of, like I mentioned earlier, with the price of Bitcoin being roughly $55 billion-ish. Uh, <laughs> that, that is insane to say ish. It's going to be anywhere, it's going to be in the, uh, according to this model, it'll be anywhere in like the... The fifty billion dollar range, um, yeah. which blows my mind. I really hope that this is actually true. Uh, then you have to remember that with the way that the U.S. dollar has been printing, or the U.S. has been printing the dollar, the dollar is weakening and weakening. So expect the actual inflation price to be roughly actual inflation to be roughly 15 percent 
in the coming year, in soon coming years. So if you are holding cash, you basically expect every year to basically take 15% of that cash and just lay it on fire. Um, and the U.S. will have to print more dollars to cover the loans that they basically taken out to create the money. So that's going to exacerbate. So that 15 is going to go to probably 20 and then they're going to print more money to cover the debt. So because no one else is buying our debt, it's only the U S government buying its own debt. So it's going to go from 20 to 25 to 30, 35. So I'm by the end of 2035, I believe that is going to be where we enter a new monetary system. Um, yeah, and that also weirdly also c coincides with the end of the baby boomer generation, um, uh, the end of their essentially work the the workforce um of that generation so all of them will be in retirement um which is quite a while from now but uh most of them would have been in retirement but market crashes have forced them to return to work so a lot of these people are expecting to work until they're uh 75 80 it's just extremely sad. And the fact that I'm sitting here and I'm expecting to retire in about 10 years. I'm 35. I'm expecting to be fully retired by the time I'm 45. That, And the fact that all these people are expecting to work until they're 80, until like 75, it's terrible. So... There's a person that I'm close to that gave that had ninety thousand dollars, gave it to their financial advisor, and that financial advisor within three months turned that ninety thousand dollars into zero dollars. Literally lost all of that money. I had advised that person to not do what their advisor told them to do. I told them to just simply buy Bitcoin and just hold on to it. If that person did what I suggested when I suggested it, that sum of money would currently be worth uh, about $700,000. That is what Bitcoin would, is able to do for you. Um, yeah. But will I? So my model is showing for end of twenty twenty one. To give you an idea, um, my model is showing that we're going to be at about ninety thousand dollars by the end of this year. Sure, we might hit hundred thousand. We might go over hundred thousand a little bit. Uh, we might stay under ninety thousand dollars. This is all averages. So you might be wondering when would we hit one trillion dollars using my model? Uh, one trillion dollars would be reached March of twenty fifty one. I don't know if I'm going to be alive by then. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to be alive by then. But with uh, genetic. Uh, um, uh, therapy like uh genomics uh, maybe uh they're gonna be able to reverse aging and then maybe i'll be wealthy enough to uh take that kind of therapy to live to 2051 we'll see maybe it'll turn me to a zombie or a vampire or something i don't know i don't know what that what that stuff will do to you but anyway i just want to share a little bit about my model um if you haven't looked into blockfi uh i suggest you do so it's pretty cool 
uh, Gemini has, if you don't feel like making a new account, Gemini pretty much has the exact same thing um, where you're able to earn with your crypto. Um, I know that, uh, uh, oh my God, Kraken is doing pretty much the same thing uh, with Ethereum, Polkadot, but that's more staking than it is earning interest on loaning out your crypto. Uh, but definitely just keep stacking. I wouldn't be buying altcoins right now. I definitely would not. This is not the time. You want to wait for the end of the alt season to be reaccumulating your crypto. So wait for a 90% retracement in altcoins before or 80% retracement before you really start um, getting back into them. So just to tell you really quick, the altcoins that I'm currently holding on to and I plan on holding on to for a long time are Digibyte. Uh, I'm probably going to, honestly, I'm probably going to sell half my Dogecoin um, if we reach the 80 cent range um, because I just have so many other bills and stuff like that that I need to just get rid of because uh, my credit card company reached out to me and let me know that they are increasing the interest rate on my credit card to 35%, which is hilarious because I, in back, back in the 2019, 2020 episode, I said that as interest rates go low, stay near zero, the credit card companies are going to have to increase uh, the interest rates on credit cards. Also, as inflation picks up, the, the same thing. Uh, and of course, inflation is going to pick up because the interest rates so near zero is constantly. Um, as interest rates pick up, rates go negative. I'm guessing the interest rates on credit cards, 45% is going to be the new norm by mid 2020s. If you open up a new credit card and your and your credit score is just like average, then expect a 45% interest rate. I mean, my credit score is average because I haven't, I've been paying off the minimum payments on my credit cards because I've been putting all that extra money into crypto. I've been able to earn enough wealth to pay off my credit cards way faster than I would have been if I did the normal snowball method of just paying off one credit card at a time uh, aggressively. So I'm thankful that I did that. Um, I really hate to see the fact that I'm going to sell some of my cryptocurrency because I'm very attached to it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be able to increase the quality of my life by selling off some altcoins. I'm not going to sell my Bitcoin. I'm not going to sell my Ethereum. Um, I'm definitely going to sell my Ethereum Classic. <laughs> That's for sure. Because uh, I've been mining Ethereum Classic for years. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be selling that off. I'm going to keep one Bitcoin cash just to, who knows, down the road, maybe there's going to be some crazy coin that's a fork of Bitcoin cash. Uh, same thing with Zcash. I'm going to keep at least one Zcash just if there's some coin that comes out in the future that's a fork, um, then I'm able to at least capitalize on that. So uh, same thing with Dash. Uh, I'm looking back historically at coins that were forked off of. Um, Monero is another one. Um, I'm going to be holding on to my Monero. I'm never going to let that go, probably. Um, the Monero project, Digibyte project, are just too like sentimental for me to want to let go. I, at this point, I just feel like I'm a baseball card collector. <laughs> I just like constantly want to accumulate more and more. I'm not going to sell my Litecoin because that is currently in BlockFi and just constantly earning me more Bitcoin every month. Um, uh, with everything that I have in uh, BlockFi right now, I'm making roughly about $300 a month just purely in interest payments just 
from it sitting there. That's it. Uh, I might have mentioned in a previous episode back around December that I sold my car and just got a eco box um, as a you know thing for the next two years. So that has uh, so I've made a six x return on that move already. Uh, so I maybe in two years from now I will uh, buy a Porsche or something like that. The new take in looks awesome <laughs> um but once again i'm thinking maybe by that point in time i will just uh take out a loan um against my bitcoin for the down payment of the car and then i will just pay the uh you know have a standard loan not actually sell all my bitcoin for the car but just enough to uh um you know down payment the nice chunk of it just to uh, uh, reduce the payments. I don't want to sell my pristine collateral, which is Bitcoin. I want to spend cash, not Bitcoin. So, anyways, I think that is enough for today. Uh, so, uh, take care. <laughs>